This is tuna on toast. Not personally, because it's there is no bigger tragedy, but the loss of the Rev. How did you, for you, move forward professionally? Yeah, I mean, it was really hard. I mean, we were as bitter as you could be watching people on New Year's Eve. It happened, you know, before you know, the new year. Yeah. And we're just watching everyone party and we never experienced anything like that. we never experienced anything since, you know, you, you know, most of us in our life will either die first or we're going to experience this throughout our lives. But seeing something that shocking and him being that young was just like, it's and something talented that, yeah, and, and talented important and just, to the band and just like your best friend. Like, it's crazy. Like you don't get to call that guy anymore and he's at your house all the time. So, you know, we were going to put it all on hold. And then I think, as humans do, what we are so good at is kind of picking ourselves back up and moving forward. It's one thing we have to do. I mean, there's no other choice. We're and made to heal. We're humans made to heal. Made to we're heal. made to heal. It doesn't mean that, you know, it's okay or that it's better. It's just, that's what we do. We, we heal at some point, we move on with our lives and we have to. And at some point, you know, within the months, we started getting ideas of how we could finish the record because we felt it was going to be like, man, we wrote this record with them. It's going to really be terrible if we don't get to finish it. Right. Then the idea was, well, what do we do? You know, and so we started piecing those ideas together. I think about a month or two after um, everything had happened. And then that was nightmare. That was right? nightmare. nightmare. Yep. And that went number one. Hail to the King went number one. Yep. And then here comes from Bad Religion, Brooks Wackerman to be part of the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, I loved him when he was part of Bad Religion. Yeah. But uh, as speaking in a professional way, because I don't understand how, dr like, what does he bring as a drummer to the band? Like, what does he rule at? I mean, he rules at everything. I mean, the guy is a, He's like that session drummer that is completely well versed in every style of music, and then also for some reason plays with Bad Religion and the Vandals. Right, <laughs> you know, like. And speaking of the Vandals, I mean, they have like the greatest drummers, right? It's like right. Brooks and Josh Reese, and it's like yes. crazy, and it's being used in the Vandals, which is amazing. You know, like it's like just punk rock silliness, but he brings everything, and and I think, um, you know, where we miss Jimmy as like a came up from the beginning with us and a visionary in the band with us and like the songwriting, this and that. Yes. Brooks is just, he brings in this technicality and also this, this quirky way of thinking and how he's going to transition things and, and move things around. And so it's just been a transition for us working with him, but it's been nothing but a pleasure because we enjoy him so much and we enjoy his personality and he's just a killer. He can play anything like just listen to the beginning of the stage and the rudiments that he's doing and all off time stuff. And, but he makes it palatable and listenable. So I think, um, is he easy to get along with? I mean, you, if you, if you can't get along with Brooks Wackerman, then, okay. you, <laughs> then you have a problem. Yeah. He's a great, he's a great guy and his family's great. So it works perfect. And he's got young kids and his wife's amazing. And so it's just perfect. Hope you enjoyed. Now hit that subscribe button. And for more tuna on toast, listen, wherever you get your podcasts.